Madam Speaker, today is the 141st day since Putin commenced his illegal, brutal invasion in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin continues to direct his gang of thugs to target Ukrainian civilians. We've seen this play from Tsar Putin before, with the mass murder of 25,000 souls in Grozny to the leveling of biblical Aleppo. To date, the United Nations High Commission has verified nearly 12,000 civilian casualties across Ukraine since February. This number is understated. In the words of Nazar Harbaluk, a 17-year-old from Buka, they were not able to defeat our army, so they killed ordinary people. Both his uncle and father, innocent civilians, were murdered by Putin's invading army. Russian military strikes continue to target Ukrainian resources, including grain storehouses responsible for feeding over 400 million people worldwide. The World Food Program estimates that 47 million people across the globe are suffering from acute hunger as a direct result of Putin's targeting of Ukrainian stores. Since February, almost 2,300 schools, Madam Speaker, have been damaged or destroyed and 290 health care facilities attacked. No place in Ukraine is safe for civilians. Currently, 12.1 million people in Ukraine are estimated to need health assistance. That's 12 million individuals who are unable to get the help they need, the help they deserve, all due to Putin's invasion. Madam Speaker, leadership, as my friend from Wisconsin just told this House, leadership from the United States is essential, now more than ever. President Biden must step up and ensure that Ukraine has the lethal weapons and supplies to achieve a prompt and decisive victory over the invaders. Only America's president can stand in the breach and lead. That leadership of our transatlantic partners and our critical allies like Japan are essential. Essential in assisting the Europeans in crafting help for the people of Ukraine, including supporting humanitarian and that critical and necessary and essential military support. The United States can support Ukraine directly also by supporting the UN Secretary General's efforts to open the Black Sea. It's essential that safely exporting Ukrainian grain currently trapped is a must do. The world is waiting for that grain. The world is starving without it. And helping alleviate that hunger crisis requires American leadership. While Putin's puppets are in Istanbul sitting at a table talking about opening the Black Sea, his military is systematically bombing and burning all the fields of wheat across Ukraine. America would also lead in planning for the reconstruction in Ukraine once the invader has been ejected. We must also hold Putin and his cronies accountable for the war crimes that they are committing daily in the Ukraine. The targeting of schools, hospitals, places of worship, and civilians is unacceptable, illegal, and immoral. Russian leaders will be held accountable. And I was pleased to see the National Defense Authorization Bill continued to set that out as a basic tenet of American foreign policy, that we will hold these war criminals accountable. I will continue to voice my support for the brave people in Ukraine fighting against an illegal invasion to protect their homeland, their freedom, their sovereignty. And I urge all my colleagues to join me in working to craft the right way to support those Ukrainians in the distribution of needed resources worldwide, holding the Russian leaders accountable for their crimes. This we must do, and this House must lead. And again, I must close, Madam Speaker, by saying it's American leadership that unites the world 
that can eject Putin from the Ukraine.